Good. All right. Today we have Brian and Brian B squared. And so and with goatees as well. So we we had the memo. We grew him out for like weeks for this. No, I'm just joking. But so Brian joins me today and to celebrate some some really big wins, some really big successes in his health journey. And uh, just a little bit about me. I've been a health coach, uh, nutrition, fitness, uh, lifestyle, deal with all sorts of different things for like 20 years now. And that's uh, I hope that's why I attracted Brian in the first place. But let's jump in and talk about some of the successes that you've had in our process and coaching together. I'm really excited to share this. And we still have a little bit of uh, ways to go, but we have made a tremendous amount of progress in time. So Brian, share a little bit about who you are, what you do, what keeps you busy every day. Um, so I, uh, I make electricity, uh, I work at a power plant. Um, it's a nuclear facility. So I'm currently in licensed school. Uh, I've been doing, uh, been in the industry for about 12 years at this point. Right. And, uh, licensed school keeps me pretty busy. Um, I been overweight for um I don't know my entire adult life and uh I just decided enough was enough and uh my uh, we went and visited my grandmother down in Florida and uh she was um they said she was close to dying Thankfully, she's still alive at this point, three months later. Yes. But uh, ran into my cousin. My cousin had lost over 100 pounds, and she looked great. Um, and that was a big encouragement to me because she's just like, yep. Um, I just I started counting calories and working out and just making a decision every day that mm -hmm. I was going to lose weight. And she's like, you have to make a conscious decision every day that you're going to do it. Yeah, uh, that was a big encouragement to me that um because she's her her whole family has always been uh overweight mm -hmm. uh, one of those families that always kind of says yep we're just an overweight family and gotcha. all that and so that was a big encouragement to me that you know she can right. do it i can do it you can do it too and, uh, and that's what got you to reach out in the first place then after that huh yeah. That's what got me to start looking. I right. talked to my wife about it, and I said, "Look, you know, ah, uh, I think that I can do it, but I think that I need help. Um, so I'm going to look for a health coach. I'm going to look for something. Uh, I don't want to do a fad diet. I've tried a million right. different fads, and um, having someone that helps keep me accountable every day more than anything else." Right, definitely. Right, you're a smart guy, right? You you work with magical rocks and and, and power, you know, a, a probably a fair percentage of 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 homes and stuff with what you do at work. Um, but you know what what's at home that's keeping you busy? Because you know I have four kids, but you kind of trump me. You know, how many kids are you looking after every day? Uh, my wife and I have six kids. We have uh, five biological children. And then we adopted one. Yeah, um, so that's so we, incredible. Uh, we got I've got three acres. Um, got a million gardens and uh, re re landscaping the yard. I've cut down about sixty trees in the past couple months at this point. So yeah. hauling wood and uh, using a what is it called stump grinder and wood chipper and all right. that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah, I think you said uh, your wife says you keep finding things around to add your own honeydew list. <laughs> it's not that you yeah, have a... Well, it's, <laughs> it's not just me. I mean, I'm, yeah. uh, right now I'm also rebuilding the deck. It's a two-level deck. And right. uh, we don't like the fact that it's two levels. So right. I'm tearing out the lower level and I'm making it all a single level. So Right, right. So you've got plenty of things to keep you busy from work to family to you know, backyard stuff. And, and so what were some of the results that we had experienced together? Like where you start, where are we at right now in the process about like 
a little over 12 to 14 ish weeks or so. So, uh, you know, fill us in like, what's been the progress. So when I started, I was just shy of, uh, 340 pounds. I think it was like 338 and change 339. Mm -hmm. Um, and 12 weeks later I'm at 301 pounds. So right. I've, uh, or 300 pounds. Um, I've lost essentially 38 pounds. Um, and it's pretty encouraging to me because right. um, my first major milestone goal is to get below 300. Right. So I'm really, really close to that. Really excited. Mm -hmm. um, I have We're on the cusp. <laughs> I like, right. Right. It could happen tomorrow, right? Uh, we've been, it's like what you said is like 300.2. And, and so yeah. we're, we're very, very close to, to, to getting under there once and for all. So I'm yep. really excited. I know that you're going to send me that, that update as soon as it happens and, and we're doing stuff. So what is that like, you know, like 12, 13 ish pounds on average per month. And, and our goal is to do it in a sustainable way. So like, what were you doing before this uh, process together uh, on your own? Um, so, like I said, I've pretty much tried everything. Um, I've tried keto. Um, I've tried intermittent fasting. Um, and you do lose weight with those things. Right. It's just, for me, it wasn't really sustainable because, um, like, we would have – We'd have like social events. So I've I've got a huge family. Um, I am one of uh, four children. My wife's one of five. And we both do a lot with our families. So um, yeah, there's a lot of people. <laughs> there's a lot of people, and there's a lot of birthdays, and there's just a lot of events going on, and Thanksgiving and Christmas and all those things. And it's hard for me to stay on the keto and all of those things for those events um or especially the fasting um uh, right i mean i i went i went so far as uh at one point i did a 21 day fast and i know Oof. that's not really intermittent at that point that's just right. fasting right but, um and i lost weight but it wasn't once i got off like i gained it all back Right, right. And that's, um, that's a lot of work, effort, and just like even like say mental determination to to avoid food for that long. I imagine uh, there's moments of anger <laughs> that might happen. And your wife's like, what are you doing? Can you just eat some food and <laughs> get your well, blood sugar levels up? It was surprisingly easy once I started. Like, yeah. After like three, you don't really get hungry anymore, yeah. which didn't make sense to me. But right, right. Um, then as soon as I stopped, so I, I, I did not realize and did zero research into how to end a fast. Okay. And, uh, I just started eating again. We actually went to, uh, the Brazilian steakhouse, Texas day, Brazil. Yeah. Right. Uh, to end the fast. And that was a huge mistake. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. And a lot of, a lot of gain just from that eating out and. And, uh, you know, your yeah, body doesn't know how to process right. food when you fasted right. for 21 days. Right. So it basically... Digestion has <laughs> not been working. So Right. So you, you turn into a very short, straight pipe. Uh, and I was going to bathroom <laughs> very quickly. Oh, so. goodness. Yeah, that's not a pleasurable experience. Oh, no. goodness. So what about the things that we did together, like really made a difference? You know, I remember talking the other day that math <laughs> was helpful uh, right. in this process, yep. but what, what, what you collect uh, for not only you, but you and, and all the other areas of like, uh, you know, I remember long testing days, you didn't have a plan around what to do with the food and stuff. And, and we, we created better solutions for you. So uh, what were some of those yeah. things that made a difference? Part of Part of my job is uh, because I'm in licensed school, we have uh, exams every now and then. And I'm at the end of class. So, uh, for example, last week I had what's called my CERT exam or two weeks ago. Um, and it's a two week long exam that you're there for eight hour days. 
right. uh, you're there. So if you don't bring food, then you don't eat. And sometimes they bring food and sometimes they don't. So uh, right. I've never been great at planning. And Brian and I talked and uh, basically uh, I got a lot better at prepping and preparing and having like, you know, a couple cups of broccoli, some chicken, some protein bars. And like right now I've got two boxes of uh, protein bars at my desk at work. So that if I do, just in case, <laughs> I have something um, because uh, my old approach was to basically just not eat and I'll eat when I get home. But then when I would get home, uh, I, you know, I have a 30 ounce, uh, right. rib you I would love to smoke your meat, your meat and, uh, and grill out quite a bit. You had yep. some beautiful looking steaks, but we had to tone them down into a more reasonable size. <laughs> so, uh, you, you packed yep. a lot of food, uh, besides like protein yep. bars, you actually like had meal and food with you, which right. uh, we all know when you eat food, the blood sugar goes up. That's just the process of it, but it helps with your brain and your brain needs glucose to think. And if you're studying and, and testing on important things like nuclear power, it's, it's good to keep the, the, the brain processing so you can get a good grade and keep your job. <laughs> so, um, yeah. How did some of the, the strategies and things work at home? And I know that your wife had some pretty good uh, benefits of just hanging out and, and doing it along with you. Yep. Uh, so <clears throat> the wife and I did a lot of talking and, um, you know, she, she encouraged me to find a coach too, because she wanted me to lose weight. She's significantly, uh, slimmer than I am. Mm -hmm. Um, but she didn't want to be my coach. She didn't want to nag me. She wanted me to lose weight, but she She didn't want another, she didn't want a seventh kid to have to watch over. Right. (laughs) Right. And she like, you know, I want you to lose weight, but I don't want to be the person telling you every day, Hey, you need to lose weight. She's like, I don't feel like that is healthy for our relationship either. So that was, was another reason why we went with you and the last part was you know you telling me that yeah uh she can be on the calls too and listen in and uh it can be a team effort and um her just basically doing the stuff that you told me uh she ended up losing 30 pounds and getting down to her ideal weight yeah that's she's she's very happy right and that's um so yeah, that's awesome. She just, we did it. We'd go for walks um, every day, and I'm, we haven't for like the last couple of weeks because uh, the pretty backyard much get up and <laughs> landscaping, work and landscaping, right. and my and, and that's cool too. Out. Real quick with that is like we didn't like exercise, right? I mean, in the the a gym right. s- setup, right? We never sent you gym. Now that is coming at one yep. point in the process but right now you've had wild success walking doing you know landscaping and taking care of your property and just being active with your kids and all too so like you know a lot of people think that they need to go become arnold schwarzenegger at the gym or you know, do a marathon training program or something that's just not not the truth and uh, it's been uh, able to allow you to you know get a lot of your your backyard uh fix and 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 uh change and stuff and the gardens and all that stuff and that's that's in, uh, incredible uh so yeah yep um we we pretty much have gotten up every morning and done something um when we didn't have big projects we were uh going for a walk and uh my goal has always been 10,000 steps at the beginning right. and then I upped it to 12,000 because I was like, you know what? Uh, more is better. And uh, if the minimum's 10, I want to up it just a little bit. And with work, a lot of my day is sitting. So right. we would get up and we would do, we'd go for a couple mile walk, get 12,000 steps in. Prior to right. the evening. And then everything after that was just gravy. No. Right, right. And if you think of what a typical day, like say stepwise, a lot of people underestimate the value of just like steps and moving and walking and, and even like I'm standing and, and fidgeting and stuff. 
Uh, that's a, what they call a need non-exercise activity, and that really can help with a uh, losing weight or even a weight maintenance uh, strategy. Now, what a typical day if if you weren't paying attention to steps or monitoring it, like with work and then having just busyness of of kid stuff. Like, where would that put you in terms of your daily activity? Um, right now, because I'm in school, um, my daily activity is pretty low. I mean, I spend most of the day sitting at a desk. Uh, right. So when I didn't do my morning walk, my step count meter by the end of the day would have me at like 3,500, 4,000 steps. Right, right. Uh, right. So that was... You just weren't moving was, enough, period. Right. Right, right. Because I mean, you're literally you're sitting in class listening to someone talk for eight hours. Right. And there's, it's, just, it's mentally draining, but it's not. Uh-huh. Uh, right. It's, it's not, not physical. Actually, right. It's not right. physical at all. So we had so, that was something that we actually had to plan out a little bit. And so instead of like say going to a gym and and working out, like we found more applicable ways, like walking with your wife or spending time with your kids or digging around in the dirt in the backyard and and such so that you were productive with your time as well. And it worked out in our favor. Now, what about like the food just seemed to work really well for you and your wife, uh, like the, the combinations or like the types of food or like some of the guidance there. Um, I big thing for me was just more than anything else. Uh, give me one second. Yes, Sarah, mm-hmm. turn it off. <laughs> kids um, yep. more than anything else it was just uh, looking at how much I was eating I've never in my life counted calories and like tracked everything right. my wife has asked before she's like hey have you considered counting your foods having like a food log and all that stuff I'm like nah that's stupid I'm not doing that <laughs> um, it's like you know, like the whole Atkins approach of right. uh, calories don't matter as long as you're eating protein and fat. Right. And it's like, that works for me. I like protein. I like fat. I'll be fine. Right. Some of those um, beautiful steaks that you'd share pictures of. But yeah, like, yeah. It, it, we're so much more calorie. Right. Now with us, we, we chose to do some calorie tracking. Uh, with others, that's uh, not necessarily the approach that we use. But you, we do need to be calorie aware because yeah. if not, then it, eating 300 extra calories in a day than you should could put you more toward calorie maintenance. And just understanding those, those basic principles of calories in the body and, and losing weight is, is really important. So we were able to have better uh, food choices, but uh, even more importantly, better uh, portion control. So we, uh, you, you ate everything you wanted to, right? Yeah, I, I was actually surprised by um, basically limiting my the fat intake with like basically, you know, if I want a steak instead of having a ribeye, for example, I could have like right. a sirloin because it's got a lot less fat in it. Um, and, you know, load up on, uh, broccoli and have a salad. And we, we basically ate a lot of like steak salads and chicken salads and stuff like that, where you just right. grill up some chicken, throw it on top of a huge salad and go to chow, chow town. So, um, yep. it's, you're making up some of the volume with low calorie, healthy foods. Definitely. And you what? How many? You, you have six kids, and you're like a family of like four and five between both you and your wife. So there's like a lot of birthdays and celebrations and get togethers and all these things that you want to be social with your family. But we were able to find ways to participate in those situations and not, uh, you know, be detrimental to what your goals are and, and respect not only your your goals, but your decision to continue to move forward and getting healthier. All right. I think we one side is at a time I said, you know, it's it's not your birthday tomorrow, right? And you're like, no. Like, okay, well, I mean, we we don't need like all the cake and all the ice cream or whatever uh, to celebrate with them, right? And you're like, okay, right. fair enough. <laughs> so and you know, uh 
like my kids made uh my oldest is gonna be 13 she's coming up yeah and, uh, she, she made my uh, adopted son's birthday cake that's she's cool. really excited first first cake that she made so i had like a very small sliver of that because um i want her to right. see that you know, i value what she did right. um, and that's something my mom and i have talked about a lot too it's not worth <laughs> offending somebody um just because oh i'm on a diet i can't eat that like right. be social um you can still enjoy company you can still have a nice time and be uh not be that guy that oh i can't have that i'm on a diet or right or, right not gonna eat that. so it's all it, it all comes down to planning you know if you're tracking it and you have an idea of um okay well you know we're going into this social event there's probably going to be uh, things that I normally wouldn't eat. So maybe eat a smaller breakfast or smaller lunch beforehand. And right. That way it allows you a little bit more room to right. be social. Right. We had, we had a, a, like teaching nutrition as like a concept and then helping you understand how to apply the science backed concepts and information into your everyday life so that you can actually function. You can, it doesn't matter if you're going to birthday, you have an eight hour test, you are digging in the dirt for the all, all weekend long and stuff. And then like, we actually like made sure that you stopped what you were doing and not just like toiled in, in the dirt. And then just all of a sudden, and then, then you end up eating late uh, in the afternoon, evening, and just kind of falling into old patterns of behavior around food so like food behavior timing managing that uh, managing stress around like school and not going to uh, like say you know food and stress are obviously paired together quite well as an outlet and and we were able to overcome a lot of those and that's why we've seen consistent sustainable progress here uh, right. so if if you we're taught if someone's watching this and they were in a similar situation where they just didn't understand what they needed to do, they've tried a bunch of different things with not sustainable results. You now, what advice would you would you give them? Uh honestly, the the biggest thing is just get help. Um, having someone to talk to and uh like you've been great in the sense of like hey i'm going out to eat with my family this is where we're going what do you suggest like right um like we went to i think a mexican place once and you're like well fajitas are great uh lots of eddies um you know minimize the calories and all that and uh you can still have a nice time it's just all the Again, all the fad diets, like the first week is great. Like, oh yeah, go me. I'm, I'm going to power through this. And uh, having someone that's not related to you or not your wife that you can bounce ideas off of, that you can mm -hmm. get help with, um, right. has been huge. And honestly, just like we talked about earlier, it all comes down to math. Uh, as long as your calories in are less than your calories out, uh you're gonna lose weight and right. it may be it may be slower um but that's why the long-term sustainability is important it's right. got to be something that you can do right for and, and you're time. losing pretty good you know eight to ten ish pounds in a month is is very good sustainable so we're, we're ahead of the curve and, and like sometimes the weight did come but then it sometimes it like paused and stuff. So we had to figure out, you know, what was going on or what the strategies were. And so being able to not just, oh, the scale didn't change again and go into old behavior patterns and overeat. Uh, that was uh, really important too. So like when we break through 300, that's just another, just another step in the process and the learning of like, okay, what do I do? How do I manage this? What are some strategies and techniques that are going to help me continue to thrive, keep my metabolism going and, and keep me excited about this process and not have things slow down. Because if weight loss was linear, uh, yeah, <laughs> that'd be something, but it's, it's not, it's, it, it goes down and it can pause and goes down and pause. And 
we don't want to like have a birthday party celebration be the thing that pauses you and then you end up like two days later frustrated with what's on the scale to then you know basically waste a week of of effort and and well, right. process and the more weight you lose the more work you have to do because you're not physically your body's not doing as much work with every step because you're not carrying as much weight anymore Right. So. Well, we're, we're also, we're tweet, we're by constant tweaks, we're keeping it as easy as we can uh, so that yep. it's, it's not ever like run into those roadblocks of plateaus or anything like that. And so we've done a great job managing it and having consistent progress. So I'm super proud of you. We've got a little bit of ways to go, right? But you, we have a plan you it's sustainable it makes sense uh not only are you benefiting it but your wife your family right the kids are seeing a role model around active healthy lifestyles and what's the oldest uh that you have uh 13 Eliana. 13 right so if if we can you know spend the next like one or two years really getting your body your lifestyle your health back in order they're going to remember you as a, a healthy person uh, for year for your legacy is going to be like uh, dad really took care of himself and he showed us how to do too and that's incredibly important so that in like 10 to 20 years you're not dealing with any one of your kids in a poor health situation because that will stress you out it'll stress your wife out and uh that they will they'll be stressed out as well and so it wouldn't be a good thing and that's something that we had my wife and i had talked about too like um I think one of the biggest uh, reasons that I'm as overweight as I am is uh, my upbringing. And, um, I don't want that to be my kids. I want I don't want my kids to look back when they're 38 and say, you know, my dad didn't really set me up for success. Right. Um, and you know, it was encouraging because so we've got uh, Amazon photos. On like a a loop, um. Mm -hmm. So like it just shows like I saw in some of our TVs random photos from the photo gallery, and uh, last week, uh, the photo from when we went to visit my grandmother, we had done a family photo with my grandmother, and uh, my kids looked at, it. they're like, whoa, that was dad, and it's like you know just over three months ago, and they can already see that big of a difference was uh was really exciting for me it was a big encouragement because i see myself every day so yeah. i don't really see it much. i've taken pictures but um having the kids like see that, that and say dad you look way different like we're proud of you was really yeah. awesome oh that's that like hits the hard strings right yeah. <laughs> yeah. being a father yeah it's awesome that is so good brian yeah, you're a rock good. star and I just uh, I love the our conversations, the progress, not only for you, but your family. Uh, that's uh, I love it when I can drop a pebble in your pond and it ripples out to those around you. You know, that's some of my uh, core values as well and why I do this, because uh, just setting impact up. And so, um, you know, for anyone watching this and that resonate with Brian, uh, have a large family, have a, a sedentary work situation, have a bit of stress around what they do a day in, day out with whatever life is. And I've tried a bunch of stuff, but can't quite figure it out. You know, consider reaching out. Uh, you can check out my website. Um, you can engage with me on social medias and stuff, and we can have a conversation. And uh, I'm just really uh, excited uh, for your journey, Brian, and, and where it's heading, because, you know, even in another three months, six months, or a, a year out, it, your viewpoint uh, of what you see uh, is going to change dramatically, and what you see reflecting back to you in the mirror is going to change uh, pretty amazingly, too. So uh, we're just going to keep making one day, one decision at a time, just like your cousin did, to lose the weight, and, and that's going to keep us moving. So I really appreciate your time today uh, sharing this with everyone. So uh, onward we go to making more progress. Thank you. Have a, a great, great uh, day here as it's Friday. And uh, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Bye-bye.